Good morning, folks. We've got the biggest outlook news on the sun in almost two years. We've got planetary exploration, dark matter, and the king of solar forcing does it again. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star was very calm and quiet. The coronal holes are turning through, hard to notice much of anything else. The solar wind density is slowly rising and speed is slowly falling into calm range. Another intensified stream is due up this week. But did any of you notice the tiny active region down south? It's not going to be any kind of major solar flare threat, but its high southern latitude could make it the first sunspot of the new cycle. Others have been saying this on and off about a sunspot group over the last two years due to their polarity, but you also need the high latitude. This is about as high as they come, and for me, it is the start of cycle 25. Let's hop out to Saturn. Hopefully we all remember the story about its rings disappearing at rapid rates, being fed down onto their giant host. Well today, we're learning more about the pathways taken by the ring water and electrified dust, and if it wasn't obvious from the arch and helical motion of the particles, the electrical connections between Saturn and the rings are the key. We have seen this in Yelverton's lab countless times, and we see it in the cosmos as well. The electric current attracts this material and feeds it with the current or along the magnetic fields. Let's go out to Pluto. As we scan the surface with new horizons, we appreciate an upper age limit on some of the cryovolcanism. Not exactly yesterday. They say the geologic action on Pluto must be less than a billion years old, however, and the point is it is supposed to be much older. By the way, that is only an upper limit on the age. Who knows how young it really could be. Up next, the gamma ray excess found by one team, and which all serious cosmologists realize was a rare high energy particle strike in all likelihood, if not data error, and which has been debunked as a real dark matter detection over and over, somehow won't die. I would love to tell you that this is the nail in the coffin, as it is another debunking of that signal, but dark matter seems to have more lives than a cat zombie battalion, so I'm sure I'll report more of this nonsense in the coming weeks. Now to our top story. The king of solar forcing of the terrestrial climate, Dr. Brian Tinsley of Texas, co-authoring a paper diving deep into the electrodynamics of the solar wind and global electric circuit interaction, especially in terms of cloud cover. This is the study he alluded to at our conference that he hoped would be published, and you can see his full presentation, a highly advanced work, and not for those who are unfamiliar with the solar climate basics or who might wet themselves if their die-hard belief in global warming is tainted. We greatly appreciate your support. Still on alert in the West Coast, we've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.